Your bike has been stolen. Those are words you do not want to hear. But what do you do if your bike is stolen? Some helpful information coming up next. Hi, it's John and welcome to Cycling on a Shoestring, another in my interview series. And this is going to be some real helpful information for you to keep your bike from being stolen. And if you've had it stolen, how you might be able to get it back. You know, it's one of those things that I do worry about. I'm very careful with my bicycles, but who knows, one of these days, it could be ripped off. And today we're talking with Brian Hance, one of the co-founders of Bike Index, about what to do if your bike is stolen and what you need to do right now if it hasn't been stolen yet. Brian, thank you so much for joining me on Cycling on a Shoestring. Thanks so much for having me. First of all, tell me, how did you start off a Bike Index? How did this all begin for you? Yeah, <laughs> it's weird to think I've been doing it this long. Um, <laughs> I, I ran a different site for a long, long time called Stolen Bike Registry that only only dealt with stolen bicycles. Uh, and then around 2012, 2013, uh, Seth Hur, who's the other Bike Index co-founder, um, started uh, kickstarted Bike Index. And uh, I, I was working on what happens after they were stolen. He was working on like how do we get all these bikes registered before they get stolen. And we met, we had a chance to meet each other and sort of realized like, hey, we're both doing the same thing here. I'm just doing this half, and you're doing this half. And we, we decided to merge and, and uh, basically take our services and put them together. And, and since that day, it just went, you know, ex exponential. And from, from day one, we, uh, we saw the benefit of sort of, you know, me working on this one specific half. All the weird problems and all the weird technicalities and craziness that happens after bike is stolen. And he working on the how do we get people to proactively sort of participate in this process beforehand? Um, and that's that's how Bike Index came to be around 2013. Well, Brian, you know, it's one of those, it's, it's nightmare city for <laughs> me when I think about losing my bike. You know, I'm, I'm out on my carbon fiber road bike and I'm down the road. I have to stop to get water or something. And I put my bike where it can be seen. I never keep get my eyes off of it because I yeah. can't take it in the store or I would. Yeah. Um, but, but what I've always heard was, and, you know, uh, register with the police, your serial number. But I think that, you know, getting bikes back is pretty hard for the police. They've got other things to do. And the fact yeah, that- Yeah, and, there's, you know, and there's some technical reasons that, that it's sort of better to go with yeah. an open platform, yeah. Yeah, so tell me, um, it, I was thinking about this interview last week and I went, you know, I don't have the serial numbers on four of the six bikes I've got. You know, I have two bikes. I have my carbon fiber road bike and I have a uh, mountain bike that I bought and it came with a card when I purchased it. Mm -hmm. So I went out and got all my serial numbers down. How do I register my bike and what's the process here? And what kind of web do you have out there or um, network do you have that can help yeah. find bikes? Um, so the process uh, can be a couple of ways. You can just pull out your phone or go to your computer right now, grab your bikes, um, you know, go to bikeindex.org. Uh, it's free. We don't charge you anything. We're never going to market to you. You'll you'll never hear from us again after you register your bike, <laughs> okay. unless that bike pops up somewhere weird and someone wants to know about it. So you can register. You can uh, put a bike in, put the serial number in, um, add photos. Uh, we want what we want you to do is detail all those things that make your bike special, all those things that make your bike unique. Even if your bike doesn't have a serial, you know, of which there are many bikes, custom bikes, mm -hmm. and carbon fiber bikes that don't have serials. I cannot tell you the number of bikes we have gotten back without serials just because we've had excellent photography of things like components scratches stickers dings uh customizations yep. because at the end of the day it comes down to you know we're looking at a suspect ad online and we're looking at a picture of your bike and we've got to be able to go okay let's let's get to 100 percent on this so the other way you can register which is the more exciting way uh, is you don't have to do a thing uh, we have so many partners now our network is so large we have we have university schools cities uh, individual bike shops, uh, some some retailers, and some sort of people in the in the e bike space, who the as they are selling you the bike, they are just clicking a button saying put that bike in bike index because they've already got your name, they've already got your name. It's all automated, and it's the greatest thing to me. You know, our our good days used to be when we register like fifty bikes. Now computers are registering hundreds, if not a thousand bikes a day and nobody's wow. lifting a finger and it's and because it's coming from those commercial partners. It's coming from bike shops. It's coming from universities. How many of you got registered now? Do you have a number on that? 
I do actually. Yeah, this is uh, we actually our stats are. I'm going to do this live while we're talking. Um, anybody can go to bikeindex.org and scroll all the way down to the, the bottom of the screen where we have our mm -hmm. running live live statistical breakdown. So as you and I are sitting here talking, we have 922,029 bikes in the system. <laughs> We've recovered wow. 119. 1,143, I'm sorry, 11, I'm sorry, wrong one. We have 119,000 stolen are registered. We've recovered 11,508 stolen bikes, which is an estimated value of $20 million. And we have wow. 1,400 partners in the system. Well, you know, it's interesting because I went to your website and right on your homepage, there's a testimonial of somebody who lives in Calgary, where I am right now, and yeah. they got their bike back because they were helped out through this. So there and must those, be- those, those change as they come in. So yeah. in two more hours, when another recovery comes in, you'll see another testimonial. It may be Mexico, it may be Denver, it may be, you know, they're, they're all over the place. Um, Calgary is a really strong region of ours. We, we have, right? we've, had, we've had a really great, uh, so many local partners there, so many people in the cycling space, law enforcement and commercial partners. Calgary, just they just, everybody there really embraced it. Um, right. And I, I can't tell you, you know, I open up my inbox every morning. I'm like, cool, another four bikes from Calgary. Awesome. <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's a very steady drumbeat. It makes me really happy. Well, I've got all my serial numbers right here. I'll be registering my bikes as soon as I'm done this. I wanted to do it right after I talk to you. So let me just let me just go through this process. I lose my bike. I've registered with you. What happens? So the minute the minute you log in and say that one's stolen and you provided some details about, you know, where, when, how, police department number, that kind of thing. Um, a lot of stuff is happening beside, behind the scenes. So one, it gets marked as stolen. It's stolen in our database. Uh, two, we have some regional like social media outlets where that, that bike will immediately get posted saying, hey, everybody in you know this city, here's a picture, be on the lookout. Mm -hmm. um, we have you know law enforcement users, we have bike shop users, we have individual users. We have, so we're tied into some automated systems for things like pawn shop networks. Right. Who's, you know, their computers are automatically reaching out to us saying, hey, do you know anything about this serial number? Um, so there's all this sort of, you know, wizardry magic happening in the back end. That pe people who are on the lookout for that serial number, or that item, their their systems are sort of talking to us. But honestly, the 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 best, the one that works best, and, and the one that bears the most fruit is just people in that city or people in your region can go to bike index and say, Hey, I saw this really sketchy situation. I saw this bike. I wonder if that's stolen. So I can just go to bike index, say red trek, my zip code, boom, what do we have? <clears throat> and right. and they're, they're just making these matches. And, you know, we have people who wake up every morning. First thing they do is bike index in one tab, Kijiji in the next tab, and they're just going down the list saying, boom, stolen, 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 stolen. And they're firing off emails to those people saying, hey, I found your bike, I found your bike, I found your bike. That, that would be the first thing I would look at. I would look at yeah. online marketplaces, be it Facebook, we have Kijiji here in Canada, there's other places you can find them, you know, it's just Craigslist and whatnot yeah. in every city pretty much. So, and again, you have more eyes out there looking and for I will tell bikes. I will tell you the craziest thing that, you know, I've been doing this for a long time and, <laughs> and the bread and butter, hey, some work in your garage, took it 20 miles away is trying to sell it on Kijiji or Facebook like that. That happens every day. That's, that's not, that's like, there's no surprise in that equation anymore. Right. Like we've, seen, oh, yeah, we've yeah. seen every, we've seen every possible iteration of this thing we can possibly see, but we've been doing this so long now that we're finding criminal effing networks. We're finding organized dudes who are small bands of people who do cross city transit, who they do, they use some operational security. So they're either hiding behind pseudonyms or they're using burner phones they're, do, they're, you know, they're, they're stealing trucks, they're ramming them in the bike shop. It's like a higher level of criminal and a higher level of crime. And we've been doing this so long now that we sort of know, you know, this guy over here yeah. is sort of linked to these guys. And we've seen bikes go from this city to this city before. Now, wait a minute, now he's involved. And we're sort of, we're seeing the bigger picture. And like, once you start looking online, my God, they're everywhere. <laughs> like, yeah. Like you, you can pick these, you know, and we, we work with a lot of people who, who work in the local cycling community and we back and forth all the time. And they're like, oh yeah, we know who that is. And we can say, well, we just found a link between this guy and this guy. And they're like, oh, I, I didn't know that. And so it's this, it's this sort of background intelligence now that I spend a whole lot of my day doing that is not these little onesie twosie guys stealing a bike here, selling a bike there. It's they've got 50, they've got 60. They, they're also involved yeah. in, you know, weapons, narcotics. <clears throat> bikes are just sort of like in the mix of these guys, but they are terrible people. <laughs> and, and, you, and you see the sort of outlines of these larger criminal organizations. And that in 2022 is where I'm spending a ton of my time.
And it is huge bucks when it comes to bikes these days. You know, some of but people are buying six, seven thousand, eight thousand dollar bikes. They're very expensive. You break them down, you can sell parts and make yeah. a fortune on these things. You know, a few years back, I was right when I lived out east, uh, back in Ontario. I was riding across Ontario. I had shipped my bike back to my mom and dad's house, and I picked up Bicycling Magazine. Back when we used to read magazines more often than not, and there was an article in there called "The Confessions of a Bike Thief," and he talked about stealing bikes in New York City. And uh, yep. he says, "I was uh, watch these two guys, a man." and his son ride up on these two high-end mountain bikes and they turned their back and I had the old man's bike and I was around the corner and I started thinking about what I'd done and I went back and stole the other one too. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. so you got to watch I mean, I just, what's I just, going on. Yeah. I just gave a talk last week that was sort of like, so, so <clears throat> I gave a talk to an audience that were not cyclists. They're not biking, you know, not really biking mm -hmm. people. They don't know. And, and it, you know, I don't think people realize like because of cargo bikes, because of e-bikes, because of COVID and we saw this whole supply chain, supply demand thing go all crazy. You know, people think bikes and they're like, oh, a couple hundred bucks, you know, here. And they're like, no, you know, like you, your entry le lowest, lowest end entry level e-bike is going to be in like the two to two yeah. range and you can quickly get to five and like, you know, a top of the line specialized turbo Levo is like 14, 15 K. Mm -hmm. And and you tell, you know, you tell a non-biking audience that you, you show them a picture of this bike and say, this bike costs fifteen thousand dollars. You <laughs> yeah. can see their head like, you know, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. the idea that someone can steal, you know, in, in 40 seconds steal a $15,000 item, go home, stick it online, say, I need to get rid of this really fast for only $4,000. And the fact that there's a whole network of gray market idiots out there and flippers and all these other people who look at that and say, I know it's stolen, but I also know I can make a bunch of money on this, <laughs> who will shell out their four grand to this guy so they can immediately turn it around and sell it for six, sell it for seven. You'll, you'll see them pass through these networks of people. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, we, economics is a thing that we look at really closely. Every single bike that comes in, we collect the value. We ask people, you know, what is this worth? <clears throat> that's how we tally. Like, that's how when, when someone in Calgary comes to me and says, how big is the bike theft problem in Calgary? I can say, well, give me a minute. Okay. According to our stats, you know, last week it was $90,000. Like, you know, we, we keep this running tabulation and we also use it for our own internal purposes because we want to know, like, hey, you know, what's an average bike worth in 2022? And we, we've we seen, you know, I've been doing this forever. We watched that creep up from about, about 1,100 to 1,700 over the last couple of years. And it's all e-bikes and it's all cargo bikes. It, it, those those two things are the driving forces but behind this sort of like higher average bicycle value. Let me ask you this, because, you know, I, I know from, uh, you know, I've been riding for long time but anyway through COVID, i saw a lot more bikes out there did you notice that your numbers went up quickly or oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It was huge through COVID, i'm thinking the yeah. COVID years i i've met in every other interview i've ever spoken like the COVID years were the craziest damn years we by any metric yeah. And and, bike and shops too. They were selling bikes. I, I have bike two friends who own bike shops. They couldn't keep stock. I mean, it was yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, that was like that was like one of the only good things to come out of the COVID. Thing. <laughs> yeah. my, every single one of my friends going to bike shop were like, I have made more. You know, I've, they just yeah. everything went best like, years they've ever had. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but it was also we saw a lot more organized theft. We saw a lot more. You know that average that bike that was sitting in your basement that was maybe worth 500 was suddenly worth 800 mm -hmm. and we we saw we saw a lot of criminals who normally would just go steal other stuff um realize like hey wait a minute bikes are hot let's do bikes yeah and so yeah. we saw this you know at least where i live and, and and here in the u.s we saw this horrible rash of of organized crime that was like you know truck ram rammings and you know professional burglaries and guys who would disable alarm systems just like pro level stuff yeah um yeah. and we talked to a lot of retailers and we talked to a lot of individual bike shops we we're like yeah you know we got hit for one hundred and seventy thousand dollars last week and they came back this week and they got the last 60 and we can't get any bikes because there's a thing stuck in the suez canal like it was it was just that you know because everyone wanted bikes because everybody bought bikes because supply chains were disrupted because there were there were these sort of like inventory supply problems the the supply demand ratio just got completely wacky and criminals figured that out they figured out i can go rob this shop in this town take them 30 miles over put them online at 7 a.m they'll be all be gone by you know 9 30 because i'm selling a six thousand dollar bike for a thousand bucks boom 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 boom, boom i had no bucks. idea i had and no idea it was gone that. and then just disappear wow. and then just get wow. in my truck and go away 
it was it was those years were really rough. So we, we saw a massive spike in deaths. We saw a massive spike in, in new registrations. Um, it's only now starting to feel like 2022 is sort of like a normal year. Right, right. Um, and like even, you know, our normal numbers are terrible. It's not great. Like our normal numbers are still like an absolute ton of bike deaths. But the numbers mm -hmm. we were seeing in, in 2020 and 2021 were just completely insane. Something I'm going to do, and I think you put me in contact with somebody uh, to talk about before we get to you is you know how to lock up your bike and keep it safe we're going to do an interview on that here on the channel very soon um it's a you you have a this is a free process for people is there any way people can support you because obviously you put time into this you've got the infrastructure website all this yeah. stuff going on in the background do you need help like that absolutely i mean absolutely yeah. we, we we need um you know monetary help is always great and we need people's time and labor and we, you're and you're a registered charitable organization basically too, we right? are we're right? a 501c3 yeah. here in the united right. states we're, we're yeah. so we when we started we like you know i've i've had more stuff stolen from me. I've had so many bikes stolen from me i've had house break ins i've had car like i've, yeah. I've yeah. lost i've had a lot of stuff stolen from me so like one of the core tenets of what we wanted to do was like we will never charge a victim i i never want you know, someone who just had a ton of bikes stolen, you know, show up and they'll say like, well, we're going to need eight bucks for you to like, no, that's not what we're doing. And so we've designed a system where basically the money that's coming in to support us is coming from cities. It's coming from schools. It's coming from, you know, municipalities. It's coming from law enforcement. And we're, we're providing special services to all these people. But having said that, if I find your $5,000 bike and I help you get it back, I am not shy about saying, hey, you know, it would yeah. really make my day. You, you got to kick a little bit back there because we got to keep the lights on. Gotcha. Uh, we do, we do get a lot of individual donations, people who just kick in five bucks, 10 bucks and that, you know, that is, is helps right. more than I can possibly ever, ever explain. But more than that, we just need people sort of like doing what I said before, which is like, hey, I'm going to look at some online ads and I'm going to see if I can match them with bike index. Hey, I'm going to get involved in my local community and start registering some bikes. Like, hey, I'm going to go talk to my bike shop and be like, hey, do you guys know about this? Like, this totally free, awesome thing you can use and, and, and sort of advocating for us and, and giving us assistance in that way. Like that goes so much farther than those personal relationships and that that personal level of touch, that mm -hmm. grassroots level of, of work goes so light years farther than anybody kicking us 20 bucks ever does um, now you, you know we've talked about i've talked about calgary we've talked about the states i think we're in a north american situation here right is that right we that, i mean we do operate in other you know we, we we've recovered bikes in new zealand like oh is that right there's, oh, okay. a crazy, there's a crazy crime ring we uncovered in mexico and, and why is okay. we're, we're you know we have london users we like it always blows my mind when I'm like, oh, I've never even heard of this country. Dude so it really, it really doesn't matter where you're from. You could sign up on bike. You could be anywhere because we're on a, we got a worldwide yeah. audience here right now, Brian. Yeah. We really do. Doesn't so doesn't matter at all. I mean, we, we, okay. we, we certainly have strong area. You know, I live in the Pacific Northwest. So like mm -hmm. that's sort of like my zone. And we have some other bike index people a lot east and that's sort of it. So we, we have these strengths, you know, strong points. Um, but that doesn't to say that, you know, dude in Amsterdam couldn't just sign up and start registering bikes tomorrow sure. uh, for, through his shop or through his organization or, or through whatever. Um, it's amazing. It's, I mean, it's, that's, amazing. that's the beauty of working in the online space, right? Like yep. borders, mean, borders mean nothing. Uh, it's, it's, you know, nothing stopping. We even, we've translated the site into a number of different languages. Uh, we, we have a system in place whereby, you know, tomorrow if somebody wanted to translate it into you know, Dutch, all they would have to do is provide us the translations of particular chunks of text and we could flip a switch and boom, we're in Dutch. So. Wow. Amazing. Well, thanks for the service. Uh, Bikeindex.org is the website. Again, I've got my serial numbers right here for my bikes. I'm ready to do that as soon as I get done here with Please you. Do. <laughs> uh, do appreciate it very much. Continued success with this. Um, again, it's one of those nightmare situations. I worry about losing my bikes, you know? Yeah. And I, um, I would I would say, you know, if anybody wants to know more, like we we publish, there are 6 million ways a bike can come back to somebody. Mm -hmm. And we, we do a lot of work publishing like, Hey, this came back. This guy had we, like we put out a lot of information about how we get these bikes back. And if people want to know more about how we work and what we do, just just head to bikeindex.org and poke around. You'll you'll find these stories. But we we make great we take great effort when someone does get a bike back. Like you said, you know, you went to your to our site and you saw this little testimonial. Like that information is gold. That information yeah. is because the next guy who comes along who's going to go, oh man, I never thought of that. I never thought about calling my shop. I never thought you know like. That that sort of information that we get from individual victims and, and bike theft um, victims, like that stuff is what drives all all the recovery. So go pop over and take a peek.
Isn't it, isn't it fascinating? You've, you can have a worldwide web, but very often it comes right down to word of mouth. Yeah. Still, isn't that Absolutely. amazing? That's so helpful to you. That's there is terrific. no, there is yeah. no replacement for a cyclist telling a couple of his friends like, oh man, check this out. Or, Hey, I had this thing stolen. Look at this picture. And just doing that sort of like person to person communication. It's, it's mm-hmm. I, I personally like, I get a lot of crazy crime stories. I get, you know, crazy stories and weird situations and, and nutball people all the time. And that's, that's what sort of keeps it interesting for me. Right. Um, I, I always track, um, I call them stolen bike turduckins where it's a, a, <laughs> yeah. stolen, a yeah. stolen bike inside of a stolen car that was then rammed like into someone's house. So, you mm-hmm. know, someone, someone writes me back and says like, well, they, they found my bike and we were, I'm like, where was it? It's like, well, it was inside of a stolen car. It's like, where was that car? It's like, well, actually they rammed a house at 40 miles an hour. So the car, the bike was in a car that was in the thing. Like, yeah, you know, that, that happens all the time. Um, yeah. For those people that know it's a turkey duck chicken all put into one. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, so just yeah. let people and, know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I, guess, I guess, I guess that is a regional thing. Um, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we do have a number, you know, there are, um, this is maybe stronger uh, down where I am at than, than other communities, but there are, you know, countless anti-theft groups out there that do amazing work almost entirely in the shadows to find the bikes, track the bad guys, often um, social engineer or coerce those bad guys into doing the right thing. Right. Um, and there are some people that do that in just the absolute most masterful ways. And that what sucks is I can't talk about it because their, their work is very sort of clandestine. Yeah. And very, yeah. Um, but it, it is not uncommon for just hypothetically, for someone to, you know, identify a bad actor who has a bunch of stolen bikes, um, you know, try to engage with law enforcement. Law enforcement says, sorry, you're on your own. Um, say someone makes a couple calls and maybe talks to that guy's mom and just says, hey, you know what? Your son's going to go back to jail. I've already talked to his PO. We've, we've got these things. He's got these bikes. We're going to give him two hours and just hangs up. And right. that sort of soft pressure you'd be shocked how, how right, often that right. works. Yeah, you, yeah. And, and that that's just one example of many, 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 many bizarre ways some of these people have learned to sort of engineer and, and uh, cajole and coerce bad guys into doing the right thing. Right, and, right. Uh, w- watching those people do that work fascinating is all, is all I can say. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brian, Brian, I thank you very much for being part of this today. I do appreciate you chatting about this. I think, you know, we'll get more people signed up, get their bikes registered. And, you know, you can be a bicycle sleuth these days. Never thought of that. Maybe I'll be doing that myself. Go to the Kijiji, Facebook, I mean, things like that. Help. Please do. Yeah. It'd be kind of fun to do that. I sit, sit down and look at what's available or what's been stolen in the area. Maybe we can find some bikes for some people it as is well. Sho- it is shocking how easy it is. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you would be shocked, you know, within 10 to 15 minutes worth of hunting, you'll, you'll start hitting matches. Brian, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much for chatting. It's really, really great to meet you. Thanks for Brian talking. Hans, co-founder of Bike Index. Hey, listen, I appreciate you watching Cycling on a Shoestring. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. We're well over a thousand subscribers right now. Don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. Hey, and share the video as well because other cyclists are looking for this information for sure. See you next time on Cycling on a Shoestring.